went through last year, choking in September, and you know, losing on that last day of the season, which let the constant get in and do what they did. But like I said on my show yesterday, and like I said on Steven's All Out Baseball show last week, you know, this Washington team has absolutely no experience in the starting rotation other than a little bit of experience from Edwin Jackson, who's not even in the top three in that rotation. And stretch run situations, you know, this national team, this is the very first time this core unit has been together with a chance to get to the playoffs. So I think they'll get to the playoffs yet, but it's going to be a kind of nice to see if they're going to be a real contender for the World Series this next month. Because the real teams are going to show up in September. you got to know how to play in September if you want to get to the playoffs and succeed in the World Series. Let me reiterate this one more time. You fought from the Cardinals last year. You fought from the Giants the year before. It's all about who's hot. And it's all about the game with the most experience. And the best rounds international have that experience, but I do think it will still make the playoffs. All right, well, uh, good points, Chris. And uh, we're actually going to be back here. We, we got AL, AL predictions, AL division, and then we have AL and NL wildcard predictions from Chris Sylvester. We're going to be right back after this break. I would actually like to give a shout-out to 101.9 in the mix. Great music go in and listen to their show as well. And then um, the Social Sense as well. Um, a great show I've been listening to for a while, and um, they've been uh, shouting out our shows as well, and I'd like to give a shout out to them. Uh, we'll be right back after this commercial break. And manage to bleed upon the canvas when life is bananas Use this mic as a hammer when I'm nailing it down Speak what I believe through the frequency of sound Never hold back cause I know that my life has been blessed I'll never go back to the throwback, I'm free from that mess I've been in it for a moment and I'm trying to improve Little by little I dribble the riddle to make the move Keep it true to who I am and where I'm from Not a rock star but I'm big to some I got enough heart and will to spark a revolution New to the game and this is how I'm moving With a positive stance just like a b-boy Ready to bust and crush the decoy A scholar to the game just like Bruce Leroy So I'm in it to win it until it's time to decoy It goes step by step, piece by piece Hello and welcome back to the Deet Sports Talk with um, my speaker uh, right now, Chris Sylvester. And uh, let's go to AL right now. I want to see the Texas. Texas, Oakland's only four and a half games back. Do you think Texas already has this division in the bag? Yeah, I mean, they've done it the last season. Obviously, Oakland is muted it. It's pending game, you know, uh, in this decade. So I think Texas is going to be able to hold on in that position. Yeah, probably the best lineup in Major League Baseball. They've had some good pitching of late, and, you know, their bullpen is a strength as well. So I don't see Oakland pitching up, but I do see the A's potentially getting a wild card spot. All right, well, go. I think they can too. I mean, they, they, they surprised a lot of people this year. How good they were gonna be, and that wild card's probably gonna be them. I would have to say for my prediction for that wild card. And um, let's go to the AL Central. Let's go White Sox, Detroit. And we actually have a question about that. Who would be your winner for the AL Central, Chicago White Sox or Detroit? I would probably have to go with uh, Chicago. They've been playing great. What do you think, Chris? Uh, I, I'll, I'll have to agree with you. I think Detroit is the better team. Detroit has the better offense. Detroit has a better pitching, and Detroit has a better bullpen, but this White Sox team just seems to be motivated with the new manager, Robin Ventura, in his first year. You know, Ozzie Gant's finally gone, and look what this team has done. They have, you know, seemed to amaze all season long. Tigers, obviously, have underachieved after the sky-high expectations after they added Prince Fielder this offseason. You know, they do have a strong rotation. They have Verlander. Derek Scherzer, and, and the list goes on, but I certainly do think that the White Sox are going to win this division, and I wouldn't be surprised to see the Tigers not make the playoffs. All right, actually, we uh, have a question from Stephen Hughes, who is uh, one of our uh, guys from National Sports. Do you think the Tigers would actually get an AL wild card playoff game? What do you think, I don't Chris? Think so. Rays are 
just playing too good. They just they weren't chasing all these teams. Now I think the Tigers would definitely grab one spot, but you know they're chasing three teams. And I frankly don't think the Tigers are going to finish ahead of the Rays, or the A's, and possibly the Angels because the Angels hold on to this 10 3 lead they have in the eighth inning right now. So he's the three and a half back in the wild card, and you know they're such a talented team that you know. If they get momentum, they could carry themselves to one of those spots. But I really don't see Detroit grabbing one of those spots. I think their better bet is actually the AL Central. But like I said, I think the White Sox will hold on. All right, well, let's go to our uh, last division, then we're going to the wild cards. We got uh, New York Yankees and Baltimore Orioles. Now, with this spot, I know Tampa Bay is still in it as well. And it's in three and a half games back is Baltimore from New York and four games back for Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay has been playing red hot. Do you think Tampa Bay can uh, come back in this? Uh, I, don't think, I don't think so. You know, the Yankees have so much playoff experience on their roster. Obviously, Mariano Rivera is not going to be pitching this season. And Alex Rodriguez is on his way back from that fractured hand, or fractured bone in his hand. But um, I, I don't see it. The Orioles and the Rays overtaking the Yankees early. I think the Yankees, you know, were struggling in that trade when they faced the back heel on the field, but they came back had a strong performance on Friday night. They pitched the game, they pitched the day, and he did stuff with a lot, but obviously, he's confused to the rotation. They are not certain on whether Yvonne Nova is going to be back in the next couple of weeks or so, but obviously if they slow as well. And don't forget Michael Pineda has been out all year. He would have been a real boost to the front of the rotation for this Yankee team. But, you know, this Yankee team is so good. They can do it with the bats, and that's really all they need. They don't need great pitching to find themselves back on top in the ALE. So I don't, I don't see the Orioles and the Rays up the Yankees in the East. Totally agree with you, Chris. I think the Yankees just have the bats and not the pitching. The bats are going to win them. They don't really need the pitching, as you said. So, um, let's go to AL wild card teams. We have Oakland and Baltimore having the two teams right now, and uh, let's go Tampa Bay half a game back, and uh, Detroit two games back, and LA four games back. Do you think Tampa Bay or Detroit can make a run? Uh, they can, they can certainly make a run, but I think Tampa has a lot better of a chance to get there. Like I said, Detroit does have a a solid rotation, but it's not quite as solid as Tampa Bay's. You know, Tampa Bay has what I think is the best left, left-handed pitcher in Major League Baseball, and David Price, despite his struggles against Texas a few nights ago. They also have James Shields, who pitched fantastic and lost one to nothing in Texas. You don't see that very much, especially in that you know ballpark in Arlington where the ball just flies with the dead stream. They also have good young pitchers and more hellish than top. So I really don't see the Tigers making as much of a push as the Rays do if they do. And, you know, obviously the Rays did it last year. They shot the world last year. They came back and overtook the Boston Red Sox in the last season. And uh, they could do it again this year, but it's just going to be a matter of, of if they start playing Totally agree with you, Chris. I remember at uh, UCLA when we did our shows, I know we did an MLB talk, and um, you said the Rays, since they got Evan Longoria back when it was way back then, um, they were going to make a push, and you were right, they've been making a push all the way with Evan Longoria back. They got a really good bat, and uh, they've been pushing as much as they could, and I like your prediction from that day on, and they've been pushing it. So let's go to the NL. Wild card here. Let's go Atlanta and St. Louis lead it right now. Pittsburgh a game back. And the LA Dodgers a game and a half. Those are the two closest. Do you think um the Dodgers can get that uh wild card spot? Or um do you think Pittsburgh could? I certainly think both those teams could get grabbed that second wild card spot. I, I expect Atlanta to hold on. And it'd be really disappointing for them and their fan base. If they don't hold on for a second straight year, that'd be really painful. But um, 
you know, I think it's just going to be neck and neck, a three-way neck between St. Louis, Pittsburgh, and L.A. coming down the stretch here. You know, St. Louis, one of the best offenses in the game, despite being shut up the last two games. And obviously the Dodgers with all their additions, and, you know, they're already a pretty solid team that they had before the big trade with the Red Sox this past weekend. And, of course, the Pirates have been playing well all year. Just took two out of three from the Turtles, which was absolutely huge for them. Their biggest series of the season yet, and they were able to prevail. So, you know, I think a lot of people thought after Pittsburgh went on that bad streak that ended Sunday, I think a lot of people thought they were just going to fall off. But they looked promising these last two games, and I expect them to be right there near the top when the season's over. Does that mean they're going to get that spot? Not necessarily, but if I had to make All right, thanks, Chris. This is um the host of Chris's Corner. Chris, you got anything else to say? No, I just want to say that, you know, watch college football tomorrow. That's all I got to say. All right, that's Chris Sylvester for Chris's Corner. Listen to his shows Tuesdays and Thursdays, the MLB postgame show on Sundays. Right, Chris? Yes, yes, sir. All right, Chris. I'll talk to you later, man. Thank you for having me, Robert. Anytime, Chris. All right, well, uh, that was Chris from Chris's Corner, and um, I'm actually going to take some um, texts or calls from anybody out there, and um, my number is 650-678-7127. I'm going to put it on the comment board, or ask me questions on the comment board. I'd really love to hear from you guys. I really want to know uh, what's on your mind about baseball. Give me anything or um, some type of NFL, and... Um, I'll be waiting for a little bit there. I'm going to see who could give me a question. And um, let's actually do some um, see some scores here. I would like to do um, final Colorado and the Dodgers 10-8. to LA did win. Toronto and New York. Toronto won 8-5. to Cincinnati 6-2 over the Diamondbacks. 8-1 Chicago beats Baltimore. 8-2 the Padres win it. And uh, Stutz, a uh, strong start for uh, them, for the Padres. And um, let's go Oakland and Cleveland. Oakland won 8-4. And um, New York and Philly, New York Mets won that game. Harvey's had a strong start as well. Tampa Bay did beat Texas. What a great game for uh, Tampa Bay to win. Longoria hit two home runs. And uh, let's go to St. Louis and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh won. 5-0, to zero, and then Detroit and Kansas City. Kansas City won that game and beat Detroit. Washington over Miami. Washington won 8-4. Harper has been playing great and on a tear. Let's go Seattle and Minnesota. 10-0. Minnesota wins that game. And uh, Milwaukee and Chicago. Milwaukee won 3-1. And uh, let's go SF and Houston. Houston Astros, the Giants won 6-4, and uh, Barry Zito didn't have a very good start, only went two and one-third of an inning. So Contos came in and got that win, what a great um, great job for Contos. Pence hit a, Hunter Pence hit a three-run shot, what a great game for him. And, um, let's see, and, um, wow, we actually have a call, we actually have a text here for Steven Hughes, which college game this week should... A must-watch game. Um, not much of a college football guy, but um, if I had to say, let's watch Stanford. Let's see how their rookie QB does. I know um, um, Andrew Luck isn't there anymore, but um, hey, I'm gonna still watch Stanford. Go, go Stanford, and uh, hope you have a great season. And this is gonna conclude the Deets Sports Talk. I am Robert Deets, your host, and I would like to shout out to uh, 101.9 The Mix. They have been great, and I like the shots in them again, and the uh, Social Sense by um, by one of our big guys, Rogi Kendra Thompson. And um, I would like to say, um, you know, what a great you and the uh, you guys, the listeners, make it so much better for us. I know we're over 2,000. We're at our goal. One of the main guys for this, me and Cameron. And um, all those guys who are doing show, Chris, Sam, Steven, Carl, all those guys out there, I would like to say thank you for doing the shows. And um, and Jason as well, Jason Garrelon, he's uh, really...